Hi, welcome to another Capra Convo. We're so glad to be with you again. Hope you had a great 4th of July. <laughs> Got another good question for you. How do you make grace safe? And of course, you probably have to define grace. <laughs> well, how we see grace is, is God's ability that works from the heart to empower you to do what you can't do in your own ability. And really, the root the root word in the Greek is charis, mm -hmm. and explain what that means. Well, charis is a gift, and God gave us this gift through the Holy Spirit, and His grace then empowers you. See, I can't be a good Christian, but He's empowered me through His grace to walk out what I can't do, and that's you too. So we're talking about today, how can we make it safe? Because people have got weird with grace. People have called it greasy grace and they've or, thrown it over or, here. Or easy believism. And I'll tell you, knowing God's love and knowing that his grace will empower me to do what I can't do, man, I'm all in. Now, does that mean I can do anything I want to, Denise? No. And call it grace. Like, well, like Paul even said... Shall we go on sinning so that grace may abound? And then he answered his own question. He said, may it never be. And so when we talk about the goodness of God or the grace of God, we really are talking about empowerment and ability that works from the heart. And I like the passage out of Titus 2.11 that, that talks about uh, saying no to sin. And... Yeah, it's God's grace yes. that teaches us to it's say God's no. It's God's grace <laughs> that is the thing that teaches us to say no. And so I just feel like people need definitions, a redefinition of terms because they haven't understood it accurately. Well, you know, Denise, I found that it's better to say yes to Jesus than say no, no, no all the time. Yeah. When you say yes to Jesus, you're kind of saying no. Yeah, to then all you're that. just too <laughs> focused on the problem. That's right. And you're thinking about that problem or that temptation and God's wanting you to look to him who's already overcome it. And because he's overcome it and now we're in him, we will overcome it. We are overcomers. We're no longer slaves to it anymore. You're no longer a slave to fear. You, you, you didn't know you, you were going to get special <laughs> edition with music in it. Today. That's right. Come on. <laughs> but I love this because really, again... It's not all the things we're free from, but what we're empowered to do. And I love that because God puts special uh, gifts and callings in our lives and dreams and desires and visions. And for you to fulfill those, you're not going to be able to do it without the grace of God, the empowerment of Jesus. You know, you were saying that a minute ago, Denise, about what grace was. You were quoting a thing about us not being... Uh, we are children of God, but we've been empowered by God's grace to walk this out. Yeah. You are no longer a slave to sin. You are a child of God. Now, if you start seeing yourself as a child of God, you're going to start being empowered to walk this out. You know, God uh, values when we trust and believe in him. In, in Hebrews, it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we know faith or trusting him is pleasing to him. And God prizes us when we're faithful. And so I wanted to re read a passage of scripture. Maybe you'll help me. Maybe. It's, it's out of the message version, and I just think it's so good. 2 Corinthians 6, and Paul's saying this to those believers. In the message version, it's so it's a modern type of version, so it's really, um, it's going to sound differently, but it's very inspiring. Paul said, companions, as we are in this work with you, we beg you, please don't squander one bit of this marvelous life God's given us. Come on. God reminds us, I heard your call in the nick of time. The day you needed me, I was there to help. Now's the right time to listen, the day to be helped. Don't put it off. Don't frustrate God's work by showing up late, throwing a question mark over everything we're doing. As God, our, our work as God's servants gets sidetracked, or, or our God's servants gets validated or not in the details. People are watching us as we stay at our post, alert, unswervingly, in hard times, 
in bad times, when we're beaten up, jailed, and mobbed, we're working hard, we're working late, we're working without eating, and with a pure heart and clear head and a steady hand in gentleness, holiness, and honest love, when we're telling the truth and when God's showing his power, we're doing our best setting things right. So, I mean, Paul goes on this long list in this passage, but he's showing us how he wants us to be faithful in what he's called us to do and how he's giving you the ability That's to right. do that. That's right. He's given us that ability to do that so that we can walk this out. So often, legalism, this is why people don't cross over, is because they've made legalism safe. They say, if I keep doing everything I'm supposed to do, then I know what God's going to do his end. And it's really not true at all. God's already done his end through Jesus, through his death, burial, and resurrection. So most people get stuck into legalism because they know how to do something. You know, everybody gets the monkey on their back. Everybody gets guilt, shame, and condemnation on them. And when you start looking at what you got to do, I got to repent. I got to go cry before the Lord or at the altar. You know, you know, when you start doing those things that you have to do to get the monkey off your back, then you're not trusting God. Well, and so the question is, why do people stay in legalism? And it's, as you said it in a different way, it's because they don't believe the grace of God will really empower right. them. So think about it. We we're not trying to we're not trying to confuse you. We're wanting to communicate clearly. Staying at our post is the plan of God. God's come to us. Today's the day of salvation, and He's empowered us to fulfill a plan and a purpose. But people so often. Uh, make it about their work rather than make it about the grace of God that empowers you to do it. I hope you hear what I'm saying. It's a fine line because people have a false sense of safety, really, and it gives. That's what they. Uh, that's why they don't believe in the grace of God, giving them vision to to help them fulfill what God's called them to do. You know, I just thought of a story, Denise. You know, the Golden Gate Bridge and when it was built. You know, very expensive bridge of biggest of all time when it was first built and when they first started building this it went really slow and they were losing cost on this thing and because people were just afraid of falling <laughs> and somebody this guy's actual name is Strauss and he had the idea of putting a net underneath the bridge as they built it across so men wouldn't be afraid of falling and it was going to cost quite a bit more to do this, but the time speeded up. Men knew that something was underneath them. They knew that they would be caught if they fell. Isn't that what grace is like? Yeah. Grace, if you fall, it's there for you. But nobody fell. Isn't that the amazing thing? They were able to work comfortably. They were able to get it done about half the time that they would have gotten done because the safety of the net. Well, grace is our safety net. <laughs> if we do fall, God is there to catch us. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to worry about what if I mess up? What if I do this wrong? Yeah. Well, and again, we're saying what, what the word says, what Paul's saying in this message ver version, as out of that same passage in, in uh, 2 Corinthians 6, in verse 14, it says, Don't become partners with those who reject God. How can you make a partnership with right and wrong? That's not partnership. That's war. Is light best friends with dark? No. Absolutely not. Does Christ go strolling with the devil? No. Do trust and mistrust hold hands? Not at all. Who would think of setting up pagan idols in God's holy temple? That's what we are. Each of us. A temple in whom God Come on. lives. God put it himself, put it this way. I will live in them, move into them. I'll be their God and they'll be my people. So leave the corruption and compromise. Leave it for good, says God. Don't link up with those that will pollute you. I want you for myself. I'll be a father to you. You'll be my sons and daughters. The word of the master God. I love that. Come on. Because it's saying, this is showing you like when the first missionaries went out, the new believers went out and started preaching the gospel. 
They went out because they were scattered by persecution. But now today, you and me, come on, we are scattered by the absolute love of God. You know, and you are a creature of God. You are have a righteous nature. You don't have a sin nature anymore. So I'm going to pray that for you, that you're going to get this and grace is going to empower you. Father, the people that are out there that have been trying to do this in their own strength or ability, I pray they surrender right now and say, Holy Ghost, have your way in me. I trust you, God. I trust your grace to empower me. I have a new nature. You have a new nature. And it's a nature that tends towards God and you will be empowered by that in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, I hope this blessed you. It blessed me, Denise. And Sunday morning, if you're in the South Kansas City area, we, we have a church that meets at 10 o'clock. Love to have you. You can turn us on Facebook on Denise or my page, our Go church's page. Go to the new, page. new website, faithministrieskc.com. We'd love to have you be a part. God bless you. We'll see you.